Today on this edition of the Guru Brew, we're going to use our skills to develop and build a mini paintbrush holder. This project was done before by me, and this is my prototype. I've actually uh, changed the design since then, but I haven't made a new one yet. Um, the reason why I like this paintbrush holder is for obvious reasons it, it organizes all the little mini brushes that you might have laying around and it's just really handy if you want to put a, a brush up here to dry or you could even put it up in the holder with paint on it and it has uh, 24 spots so that uh, it uh, it's really handy and it, and it wipes up easily if paint drips down here I want to modify this design slightly so that a cross brace goes here halfway through so that I'm able to hold smaller brushes such as this as well as a gluing surface for assembly from here to here without relying on the plexiglass to wood joint. Um, I'd rather have this float in here in this slot and then have a joint that goes from here to here as well as here to here as a glue joint uh, very easy nice little box next thing we're going to go on the CAD machine and start drawing up the changes so hang tight so here we are in SolidWorks and I'm just marking up the changes for our paintbrush holder It's still a 24 brush design. Uh, one of the major changes that I talked about before is this section down here. It allows 12 of the brushes to be elevated up for smaller ones, as well as provides an assembly glue joint here to here, here to here, as well as the ones that are already on the bottom. Other than that, those two changes, it's going to remain the same, and I am going to start cutting it out here in just a moment. So I was just miking out some of this extra plexiglass that I had laying around from the other day. I've been dealing with plexiglass a lot lately. That's probably the stuff I'll use right there. So the first thing I'm going to cut out is this plexiglass thing here. Point one oh thick. Okay, let's send the file. Okay, I brought my part into Mastercam and I'm just checking the cut order of these holes. You can see on this yellow line how it's drawn to the next one. To tell me which pattern the bit's going to take in the program. Under parameters, it tells me the type of tool that I'm going to be using. In this case, I'm going to have a quarter inch boss um, straight bit. Bosch, I'm sorry. This tells me how deep I'm going to cut. That's what I just measured the plexiglass for. And this breakthrough amount is the additional amount I'm going to go through to make sure that the part falls out of its plastic around it. Okay, be back. Even though it's not perfect, I like to verify my part in Master Cam to see what it's going to look like if it were cut. It's not perfect by any means, but it does give me an idea. So with any luck, this is what we'll get. On to the next step. I finished creating the part and assembled it in Mastercam and this code that you're looking at is now is called the G code and this is the actual code that runs the program that cuts the part. 
just a bunch of numbers really. So I'm going to download that to my machine and uh, start cutting. Well I'm going to put my secret weapon back on that acrylic cutter. I liked it so much when I cut those other pieces I'm going to stick with it. Well, that's one of the drawbacks of owning one of these nice machines is you have to maintain it. And you get so busy with your projects that you forget to do certain things. I used to have a schedule up here and, uh, you know, you know what happens to your schedule when other things come up, so. Yeah, just a little white lithium grease should do the trick. Well, this is turning into a big hairy deal. Okay. Well, I just got through putting some lithium grease on this this uh, head here. This is actually called the Z-axis. It moves up and down. And it's probably the one that's most stressed out, too, because it has to hold the weight of this router. Plus, it has, you know, the force of the cut and whatnot, too. So, um, it does require maintenance. And um, the way that Techno built this machine, they've got this boot around the uh, bearings and the rails, which are really great. And the, the screws are all covered up. Because those are precision screws, and if you have to replace them, they're god awful expensive. But uh, I don't like the way that they attach this boot down here. They've got this, this weird bracket thing that fits in here like this and holds that boot down. And it's a real pain to take off every time. And they should have known that uh, because this is built for a dusty environment. So anyway, um, just a rant. Z0. Hey, anybody seen the creamer? Oh, pretty good. Time to cut some wood. I thought this is worth noting. This is master cam and I'm working on my individual parts. There's my side. There's my bottom plate. There's my middle plate, the new the new one, and the other side. And if I set these up in an operation list and tell it what kind of stock that I have and how I want to fill that stock, this program will automatically um, give me the best layout when I hit this. The square in the yellow represents my stock and this is how I put the parts on. And it's also sensitive to green. Uh, I don't have green on this wood that I don't have to worry about, but if I did, um, you can program it to um, be mindful of what way the green goes on each individual part. This way we can nest our parts together and cut it as one sheet rather than individuals. Um, I will show a dry run of this. picked the wrong one. Let's try it again. That gives you an idea anyway. Okay. Okay, these are all the wood parts nested ready to cut.
the reason why I was holding the parts in the in the tray is because I forgot to leave tabs on them so the parts didn't fall out of the main part so uh, not a safe scenario but uh, that's why I was holding on to the parts okay I've got all my parts cut out here they are I just did a very light sanding on the edges the pieces were coming out of the machine Cuts look pretty good. Okay, I, I lightly sanded each one of these. So what I want to do now is try to dry fit them together and make sure they're going to go together. Something that comes in real handy when you're trying to sand is one of these nail boards. I thought. Got a whole bag of these. So let's dry fit this together and see what we have. This is the new piece that I altered. Well, there it is all dry fit together I think that looks great let me get a brush here and test it well I don't see a brush something like that small ones will come up here so that's gonna work out really great I'm going to just use some white carpenters glue this is the kind that I like to use that way I don't have to put glue on these joints only the two uh, pieces of wood on each side and I will just put a little pressure on it by putting it off the side like that I'll probably put some heavy up there make sure it's secure so I'm gonna get gluing and I'll be back actually <laughs> I'm not gonna glue I'm gonna paint these first so painting's next I have one quick coat of red paint on here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get assembling. Okay, well the glue's dried, the paint's dried, and we've put them together and here it is here's the finished product so I hope you've enjoyed this project uh, give us a thumbs up and we'll see you tomorrow thanks for watching hey guys this is Steve thanks for watching hey don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment see ya